Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. This is David Bonson, and I am happy to be speaking to you. I'm actually in a hotel, as you can see. Um, be flying out to New York tonight, have some meetings out there tomorrow and over the weekend, and been in California um, all week, but right now at a symposium with our custodial partners at Fidelity and participating in a few discussions and meetings with some of their leaders and and other colleagues and just a lot of a lot of stuff to take in right now um really really beneficial things to our business but all that to say this has been a very full week in the markets and and we have a very very meaty dividend cafe an awful lot of hours went into the writing this week a lot of time goes into it every week um but oh, the big theme you're going to you're going to see at the written dividend cafe is uh, the global uh, turmoil that, that we're seeing right now. Um, very different story than 2017, which as I talked about ad nauseum, was a year of really kind of unprecedented global synchronicity, a global growth story that became highly harmonized across different domiciles from China to Japan to Europe to emerging markets, South America, and of course in the United States. And right now what you have is a very interesting decoupling but not where, oh, the U.S. is hurting, but don't worry, the rest of the world is doing great. But in fact, the exact opposite, um, where United States uh, uh, growth on a GDP economic growth basis is extraordinary. We just had a 4.1% real print, and, and we're expecting a very solid print for third quarter GDP as well. But of course, the corporate earnings growth as well, uh, record levels, uh, 23 24% year-over-year earnings growth on top of 9 or 10% annual revenue growth. So that's sort of been our story here. And then you look across the pond, Europe may end up at a 0% growth year. Uh, China um, is continuing to slow down economically. Um, Japan's corporate earnings sector is very much improving, which is why we view it to be investable. But their earnings story has been, excuse me, their uh, economic growth continues to be highly uh, troubled. Um, and then on the emerging markets front, you have this issue of so many parts of the world having borrowed to fund their kind of national expansions and, and maturities uh, with U.S. dollars. And now you have this sort of dollar liquidity issue, a shortage of dollars from Fed tightening to um, the fact that a lot of these countries – have a certain degree of leverage, and now they have to go borrow, excuse me, they really have to sell their own currency to exchange for dollars to pay back debts that are denominated in dollars. And that can't all happen at once, pushes currency values lower in the EM, in the emerging markets countries. And so that becomes a kind of economic backdrop um, that that represents a real significant headwind for some of those countries' top line uh, economic growth. Um, so the Turkey incident foiled things up a little bit and so forth. Well, then what you ended up happening, though, is the market dropped quite a bit on Monday this week, um, rallied a little Tuesday, dropped quite a bit Wednesday. And then now, again, I'm recording here midway through the day. I, uh, yeah, we're still have several hours to go, obviously, but we're up to almost 350 points right now in the Dow. Uh, the futures this morning at three o'clock in the morning Pacific were already up. Um, pointing to about a 180 point increase when I first woke up this morning, and then it's done nothing but go higher since then. I don't know where the market will end today, but my point being, you've had a lot of volatility up and down this week. Right now, we're actually up on the week, and so the tensions around global growth questions, the potential for an improvement, and this is the thing I want to highlight: what's pushed the market up this morning. The word that there's ongoing now uh, meetings that will take place between China and the U.S. again on their trade talks. This is how vulnerable the market is to a melt up. And so those are maybe different words than you're used to hearing. But the idea that all of a sudden you could get a positive headline announcement like you got a few weeks ago with the U.S. and European Union. The substance is not totally important, but the market is petrified of some headline announcement and uh, it could not only squeeze the you know what out of the shorts, but it could um, uh, the short sellers, but it could uh, very much uh, represent a substantive move higher for risk assets, and so that causes people just as markets are vulnerable to down to drawdowns and sell offs and panics, 
um, the opposite could take place too. So that's where we are. Um, listen, my positioning right now as an asset allocator is very simple. I find the emerging markets asset class to be more attractive than I did a month ago, more attractive than I found it to be six months ago. Um, there is a very uh, high possibility of continued volatility in the space. We would not want to call a bottom, but this type of indiscriminate selling in the asset class in my experience, leads to a great investable opportunity. So we're looking at increasing our exposure to emerging markets, and we're looking at trimming some of our high-gaining stocks in the U.S., not reducing their target allocation, but just simply trimming where we may have achieved some, some significant gains. Um, yields dropped this week. The bond market had a very good week in, in response to some of the turmoil, and that um, asset allocation benefit of bonds and stocks has been largely working over the last several months, whereas earlier in the year it had not. Uh, so that's kind of our story here this week. Um, very much uh, enjoyed some of the charts I got to put in DividendCafe.com this week, showing the futility of being heavily invested in Europe over the last 10 years, um, and, and also giving you basically uh, a different perspective on volatility. The notion that 2018 has got, had this super elevated high level of volatility is very true if you compare it to last year. But if you compare it to a couple decades, three decades of history, you will see that this is very, it's not low, but it's very average volatility, day-to-day -day fluctuation in the market. And it's a very important reminder for investors to have. And it does bring back some of the risk premium. Um, the, the compensation we get uh, is in exchange for volatility. And when you have low volatility, you have to expect lower uh, return premium. We think we're going to get more premium going forward as a result of higher volatility. Uh, you may not like the volatility, but you may end up liking the return. And that's sort of the trade-off. So uh, check out DivinCafe.com for more of that. Reach out to me with any other questions. Do find the announcement on our website for the uh, hiring we made this week of our new Chief Operations Officer, the CEO, the first ever COO at the Bonson Group, uh, Brendan Sullivan. We had worked with him for several years at Hightower Advisors, and we sort of uh, brought him over. He has officially left Hightower and joined us, and and will continue in our relationship with Hightower for the services they provide us. But Brendan will be in house at Bonson Group providing a lot of that necessary operational leadership we're so excited to have. It's a great opportunity for our business and, and really something I personally am very excited about um, so that it enables me to just be an advisor, more and more connected with my clients, connected with the markets, uh, reading, researching, and doing the things that I love doing and uh, helping uh, someone else run the business day to day. He's just really an outstanding operator and we're very Blessed to have Brennan joining us. So that announcement is at thebonsongroup.com. I'm going to leave it there. Reach out with questions, comments. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care.